a guy called Bruce Lee. And uh, if you watch it naively, without understanding the politics of the world, you will think it's about kicking. It is not about that. And when I was an undergraduate student, my best friend was from Tokyo, a Japanese person. And my other uh, classmate wa was uh, a guy from South Korea. I knew how to make them fight. You know, uh, I would always say that I think the Germans knew what they were doing in the Second World War because that's exactly what the Japanese did in, in South Korea and China. So in one of Bruce Lee's movies, I think uh, somebody came and killed uh, his master. Then he goes for revenge, to revenge. But what you don't see, if you have lived with Asians, you will realize that it was a, Chinese, it was a group of Chinese people and a group of Japanese people. Chinese people's last names are very short. Chen, Yi, uh, Yi and so on and so forth. Japanese surnames actually sound like vendor surnames. Matsuchita, Takawira, Sawasaki, <laughs> you know, so it's a completely different people, you know. So it was about, um, the war between Japanese and Chinese. And then in this movie, there is a park, and there is a person who is a Sikh. Sikh is a, is a religious group in India. They wear a turban on the head. And Bruce Lee comes in, and then, and, and then he's not allowed on. And I want, I want to watch that with a Chinese person. He says, what was written there on the wall it said, no dogs or Chinese allowed. So in this movie, um, towards the end, Bruce Lee goes and, uh, and, and pays revenge, and he's arrested. So when he is arrested, he looks at them and says, we are not sick. What does it mean? You know, for a long time, the Japanese, whenever they refer to the Chinese, they used to refer them as the Sikh men of Asia. So this was about global politics about this. And China was humiliated time and time again. The Japanese went and invaded China. And remember, Japan is a very small country. There's only 100 million people. China has 1.3 billion people. So you are basically having a small nation humiliating a big nation, you know. And Sometimes in 1948, 1978, a Chinese leader called Deng Xiaoping came and said, it does not matter. We are no longer going to be you know, uh, the playground of the world. We are going to become a superpower. Today, China is the second largest economy in the world. And of course, that is impressive. One of the reasons why it is impressive is that from 1966 to 1976, in China, there was no schools, there were no schools, people were not going to school because it was the time of the Cultural Revolution, but the Chinese have stood up. So how do we stand up as South Africans? It's, it's very, very simple. Because you can't negotiate resources. Nobody is going to come and give you money. And by the way, the problem with South Africa now is that South Africa has run short of money. You know? South Africa now does no, no longer has money. Uh, the money that uh, we had in 2007 does not exist. It does not exist anymore. If you want to fix telcom, uh, ESCOM, you will have to go and borrow money outside because your rent is not going to be accepted to buy. So this is the period in which we are going to live, and, and, and if, if, if we don't, if we don't handle this time well, it will take more than 200 years for us to be able to have the capacity to do basic things that we could be able to do just five, 10 years ago. So that, that is basically what is happening. So basically we live in a global economy. Where what you eat, what you, uh, what you wear, 
was not made in South Africa. For you to be able to afford that, people must come and buy things from South Africa. But the problem is that South Africa has very few things they can be able to sell. Our minds are now deeper. And by the way, no country has ever become wealthy because of, of, of resources. Countries become wealthy because of the brain. When they can make stuff, when they can take copper and make a, a car, you know, that is what it is all about. So you cannot oppose the fourth industrial revolution. You can oppose it, but it will engulf us. If we just oppose it by speaking, we are dead. So the only way in which you can tackle it is for these young people to study very, very hard. The Chinese are taking their kids to school for six days a week. And they are keeping their students for nine hours a day. What are they teaching them? What are they teaching these young people? Now, do you think if you open a factory in China and you have these people who have been put in a classroom nine hours a day, six days a week, and we, you have people from here who after one o'clock, they leave school and they don't go to school on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday. Do you think you can outproduce them? No way. Not a chance. They will eat you alive. So... The owners of robots are going to be are the Germans, are the Chinese, are the Japanese, are the Americans. That is a fact. And we need to change that. That's all I am saying. We need to change that. Now I will talk, um, I will also address what the president, Tunduka. I understand there is only one president of uh, the SRC here. Is that so? So his uh, presidency is not being disputed. And by the way, you should not take that for granted. You know. um, government spending on education. Look, let's just agree. Our education system is a mess. And the reason why it is a mess is because we spend 20% of South Africa's budget on education. And there's very little we can show for it. So, the problem with our education system, number one, is discipline. Many of our learners are not disciplined. Many of our learners are simply not disciplined. Many of our educators are not disciplined. You go to some schools, you have uh, teachers who disappear for weeks. And the children are suffering and we are not doing anything. We need to do discipline. By the way, I, I wouldn't give somebody a, 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 a tablet. I think a tablet is a waste of money. It does not even have a, a key. You can't even program on it. You can hardly write a document using a, a tablet, isn't it, you know? Yes. Do you think um, novella, uh, you can be able to write your PhD thesis on machine learning in an environment using an iPad? No. You know? I actually think it was a scam. <laughs> because you, know, you can answer emails and so on and so forth, but you can't really do much. If you wanted to do some serious, uh, some serious uh, uh, Excel uh, editing, you can't really do it there. You know, you know, uh, it's not actually very. You can't even store information inside it and retrieve it. A laptop, you can be able to do it, isn't it? You know. So it is a bit of a scam if you think about it. You know, because you know. So now the question is. What is the role, what the president is saying is that what is the role of technology in teaching and learning? And what are the missing links? Today, you can, tonight, you can go and register for a course in artificial intelligence from Stanford University. 
This is 